It's um, my pleasure to start the afternoon session. I think the morning session was very um, interesting. I heard a lot of things that kind of sparked some ideas in my head for um, future directions for us, and I hope that the same happened with you. This afternoon we have um, a nice mix of different sized projects that you're going to hear about, so um, it'll be a little bit of a shift maybe from the morning, but I think it'll um, be very instructive as well. So um, without further ado, uh, I'll start my introductions here. So as library director at Black Hawk College since 1986, Charlotte has experienced significant space consolidation, technology implementation, and dramatic changes in how students use library resources. Although her MLS degree was awarded in 1976, she's taken courses and attended workshops at more than 15 different library and information science schools, many of them dealing with managing change, connecting with users, using creative problem-solving skills. She also has an MA in management and supervision and is currently an online lecturer at the School of Library and Information <laughs> Studies at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. Charlotte Key is here today to tell us about academic library redesign literally on less than a dime. Good afternoon. I'm delighted to be part of your afternoon, maybe not so delighted to be the first person after lunch. Um, this will be a different style of a presentation, just a little bit about Black Hawk College. We're a community college, a comprehensive community college located in Moline, Illinois. We have a second campus, our rural campus, now in Galva. It's still in Kiwani as far as we are concerned, but the post office made us change the address. Our campus in Moline was built in the late 60s, so what you saw at San Diego is pretty much our architectural style. Dense, concrete, lots of glass. That concrete has been a challenge for us. So has been our thinking. You're going to see a couple photos in here, and I'm prepared to hear you go, ooh, but that was a part of my plan. <laughs> so let's get started. One of the nice things about community college development in the late 60s, early 70s, was the anticipated opportunity for growth. We were a four-level facility. We had an entire level just of tables and chairs for studying. We had a, sec a segmented circulation area with a built-into-the-wall catalog. The little drawers, yes, they were built into the wall with their own electrical lighting system. We had, yes, <clears throat> we had a massive circulation counter, concrete block faced with brick, topped with marble. <laughs> It was a stunning facility. We have a main reading room with a ceiling that starts at 25 feet tall and goes to 40. So they planned for growth. It was their anticipation we'd have a collection of about 150,000 volumes. <laughs> ah, sorry. Um, <laughs> we, I don't know how they thought that we were going to get these volumes around because we have the smallest, tiniest elevator I've ever seen. You put three people in there and you can't help but touch. Never mind moving books up and downstairs. And oh, by the way, that elevator, it actually is a five-level elevator in a three-story building. It doesn't function very well. It hangs. There are phantom openings and closings of the door. One Thanksgiving Eve, many, many, many years ago, two girls were home early for the break from their real college, and they got caught in our elevator, and they had to be extracted through the ceiling. And it might have been a problem because the elevator was initially installed by a company called Montgomery, who then became Kone, but it was actually maintained by a different elevator company. I don't know, but anybody who really works at the college knows not to get in that elevator. Although today with a cell phone, you can call for help. There were other issues with this structure. The HVAC was intended to cool a huge area. Well, as you can imagine, since 1970, our real estate, as large and as spacious as it is, has attracted a lot of attention. A lot of attention. There are at least a dozen computer labs downstairs in the lower level where we had rows and rows and rows of bound periodicals. We had the circulation desk, fortunately, um, exploded and taken out, but now that's a part of the advising center. The special collections room, which had this gorgeous copper-lined fireplace, is now where the advisors have their offices. And I don't want to tell you the history of the library director's office, but I will tell you right now, square footage-wise to window, I've got the best place on campus, 
but I don't have any heat and I don't have any air. You make sacrifices. So, what's been happening? Well, next slide, please. We were stuck about thinking conventional space use. This is our facility from the outside looking across the street. And the fuzz is on purpose because we were stuck in the mindset that we're stuck in a concrete box and we can't do anything different. The view from the outside, pretty stunning. The view from the inside, also stunning. But we have always considered that wall of window facing north to be a handicap and not something to exploit. So that's our next goal. Let's exploit the window. Move on. There have been a number of changes, all of them from outside agencies taking over our space. The one that was the most interesting was to create a more engaging lower level, and that necessitated, like I said, the explosion of the circulation desk and the displacement of staff. Now, I considered that a good thing because the only way I knew I had circulation staff downstairs was if they sneezed or coughed. I couldn't see them. Our reference desk was buried back in a corner not particularly accessible. And if a student needed help, they weren't going to come up two flights of stairs to find us. So with the construction of a new entry, which they didn't really want to tell us which way the door was going to go, we sort of guessed. We had the opportunity to purchase new circulation desk furniture. Wood, much friendlier, not quite so massive. But we had to sacrifice the built-in shelving that we'd had for reserve materials. And those of you from academic libraries know something about reserve collections. They look pretty, pretty nasty. They're disorganized. You have floppy sheets of paper. You have all kinds of things. It's just not pretty. I should point out that the person who supervises me is a dean, and that dean's office looks out over the library. And my current dean, who's with me here today, doesn't really think we look too messy, but a previous dean would send me a weekly email, could you clean up this pile of paper back in that corner? And we're like, it's a vitally important stack of paper. It's for Mr. So-and-so's reserves. This was the desk as we relocated to a new what we thought was going to be permanent area. We incorporated shelving that was already standing to be part of the reserve collection. We had regular modular furniture, which I can't say enough good stuff about. And then we had conventional library cubicle in the back so that the staff was sort of spread out in very, very open, very accessible location, absolutely smack dab in the middle of the library. If they sneezed, everybody heard it. If they coughed, everybody heard it. If they answered the telephone, everybody heard it. And we heard everything that was going on with the students. It wasn't ideal, but we were stuck in conventional thinking that this was where it made the most sense to put the desk. You wanted the desk to be close to the door. Access in, access out. So what happened next? The um, second move involved creation of a classroom. We're grateful for that. And movement of our periodicals that had been in a very dark, unpleasant corner to an area we called the reading corner. Now, this is a staged photograph. We never, ever had that many people sitting in these chairs at one time. <laughs> partly because they're not the most comfortable chairs, partly because they felt like they were waiting to get in to see the psychiatrist, <laughs> and partly because of a complaint we have consistently heard from students in our evaluations about library satisfaction during National Library Week we all do that, that there's just too much brown in that library. Brown tweed carpet, brown furniture, brown end panels. The only other colors we had were avocado, pumpkin, and squash. Now, they've gone and come back again. And I mean, I'm looking out at the audience and seeing quite a bit of those colors, but ours are the original. Okay? We didn't just get these, we've had these. And what you can't really tell is, yes, those doors are ugly. They're the most horrendous mustard color I've ever seen. I mean, this was it. And fortunately, we have a major Fortune 500 company, not too far from us, that makes really good quality office furniture. And I had an employee whose husband worked for them, and we could get discounted, damaged office furniture. So the cabinets you see, the bookcases are Han. Uh, we didn't pay full price for them, and at least it gave us the opportunity to do something that I think is a radical suggestion in a community college library, which was to segregate our, our periodical publications. The ones that the students had to use but didn't want to, you know, the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology, 
Yeah, we kept those on the bound shelves. But the ones that they came in to read, like Outdoor Life or Field and Stream, we were able to put on the shelves so that they could come in and take off the shelf and read and relax. And this is a true story. I had a young man come to me one day, and he said, could you write a note to my mother? And I'm going, why? Well, she doesn't believe I come to the library every day and read these magazines. We can't afford to get these magazines at home as much as we'd love to, but this is where I come and hang out, even in this kind of awful-looking area. So I wrote him a note. <laughs> you know, why not? Um, we're still hoping to get new carpet. That could be on the budget for next, next year. So what do we do with this area? We think because it's the way it's always been, it's the way it has to be. But in the fall of 2006, something really awesome happened. So the next slide. This talks a little bit about some of the other changes we made. Partly, one of them was that with that circulation desk in its new location, the circulation staff got to answer more valuable questions. We kept surveys. Each day, how many questions did you answer when you were downstairs at the big block that had to do with the library? 70% of the questions they answered on a daily basis it had nothing to do with the library. It's, where can I get this? Where do I buy my books? When they came upstairs, the questions they were asking were more appropriate to the library, but they didn't have the tools to feel they were so successful at helping our students. So we moved a workstation just to do library catalog for them. We moved the reference collection so that it was closer to both of us, and that also eliminated one of the scary areas of our collection. We had very tall, very short, um, narrow collections of, bound, of, of reference books, and we had students that would stand back while we went to get the acronyms and initialisms because they didn't want to walk in those shelves. They were so dark. Our shelving is like 12 feet tall. It just, we can't use the top two shelves. So we started thinking, how can we collaborate? What would make sense for us? And this gets back to the year 2006. And the next slide. <clears throat> you can move on. I'll come back to this one. Um, the University of Wisconsin uh, has had a very strong program with the Prairie Area Library System. If you're from Illinois, you know we have these nine regional library systems. Prairie Area is the one at the extreme north. It encompasses the old Heritage Area, uh, Heritage Trail, Northern Illinois, and River Bend systems. We, we span a very large geographic area. We encompass three counties in Iowa. And we felt that we needed to be growing our own next generation of librarians. I'm sure many of you have had that conversation. Where does the next generation come from? Who takes our chair? And the University of Wisconsin heard our need and said, you know, we'd be willing to work on a program to provide distance education for Illinois library staff. And one of the things we're going to ask you in Illinois to provide for those students is a host site for a practicum. The student will be with you for 120 hours a week over the course of a, or 120 hours over the course of a semester. Um, sometimes it felt like 120 hours a week. Um, and we want you to give them a wide variety of experiences, scut work and visioning and anything else that might be necessary. So in the fall of 2006, we engaged our student in a visioning exercise. And we didn't bring in a facilitator. We just asked that question, if we were great a year from now, what do we look like? How did we get there? What did we do? And she started to sketch something. And she handed it to us. And she said, have you ever considered putting the circulation desk where the people sit and read and taking the seating area and putting it where the circ desk was? And we were just flabbergasted. Never mind the IT issues. Where are we gonna, how are we going to move the computers? How are we going to get all the wire? How's all this going? But why? And she said, well, I work in a public library. And the image, the first, the first view you have when you walk in is very important. And she says, to tell you the truth, yours is kind of messy. And I've been hearing that for every week from my boss. So it took us a while to think about how could we do this. But ultimately, we realized what was to be lost if we didn't try it. A few hours of a, a maintenance person's schedule, a few hours of IT, and besides we had modular desk furniture, we had modular office furniture, we should be able to make it happen. It happened in December of 2008, and we are all like, why did we wait so long? <laughs> because it was an immediate wow, as the next slide will show you. 
Now this is actually a panoramic shot that my library assistant pasted together. And you can't really see everything, but off in the far right corner is the edge of the circulation counter, like it was made to go there. The ceiling is dropped, it's close to the public computers, it's very close to our research assistance desk. They're in a more square rather than long oblong, and it's amazing how much more efficient they feel they are about doing their jobs. These three shelves here used to be where there were children's books on reserve and a number of other things, and we had a bestseller collection on one little tiny bookshelf. We had new books on another little bookshelf, and we had the book list classics. When book list was 100 years old a couple of years ago, they published a list of the best book of each year, and we decided that was a cool classic collection to have. So now, this is immediately where people go to if they want a bestseller, they want to look at a new book. And by the way, our new books are circulating. When the stack was buried back in that little reading corner, nobody got there. We also took the uncommon step of deciding that encyclopedias and dictionaries were not necessarily a reference, specialized collection, but something that maybe somebody reading a newspaper would like to be able to say, where is this country? I've never heard of it before. Or what does this word mean? I don't know. What, it, what its definition is. So we pulled all the encyclopedias out. We brought the newspapers to one place. And we pulled a lot more magazines off the shelves. And now, in addition to Outdoor Life and Field and Stream being read a lot, gourmet, good housekeeping, and believe it or not, teaching and learning. Tech learning. It's, it's, just, it's been stunning for us to see people coming and staying and using our resources. The next slide. You can see one of the dilemmas with that window that faces north. You get a tremendous amount of glare. But the chairs that we've pushed out there, the carols that are out there, are consistently used. And our next plan, and one of the reasons we're here today, is to get an idea for how do we assess, will they really, if we push all our tables and chairs out there, will that become an attractive area? Will that be where they want to sit and study? You can start to see, next to the original chairs, but somehow they don't look quite so bad spread out, these Ottomans, and I have to tell you the story of the Ottomans. We redid our um, cafeteria. These Ottomans were a part of the furniture that was there, and these Ottomans were slated to go into a dumpster. And the person who's in charge of surplus equipment comes to me and says, I know they don't really match what you have up there, but don't you think Ottomans would be popular? And I wish we had another dozen Ottomans. They get moved all the time, and they don't have wheels. They're very bulky. We had the furniture arranged in one area, and it's been rearranged a lot, even without the wheels. They use the Ottomans as seating. We have ESL teachers who bring small classes up, and they're working together on projects in this area. We have a dean who will schedule a staff meeting and bring his staff in in the afternoons and sit around and have a conversation. We have staff coming back to the library to pursue the pleasure of just simply sitting and reading. It's been truly amazing. So what's the next slide tell us? We used everything we had, and we have some amazing maintenance personnel who figured out that this, this board that was a shelf could actually be a swing gate. He figured out how to put a hinge on it. They did an amazing job of repurposing everything we had. And what was truly amazing is that it was exciting for them to figure out that they could do this with a cubicle panel. They turned it on its side. They were actually able to, we needed something to fill a space. Standing that's normal way, it didn't fit. But if you turned it down and put a little bit of um, some tracking on it, it worked perfectly. We relo relocated our display case, which had in the past been more of an obstruction. And now it's graced with great flowers and plants, and it's a part of the wow factor. People stop and look at it. We have an intern from Augustana working with us this spring, and she's got an anime dis a display in the case. People are stopping to look. The amazing view has attracted a tremendous amount of attention. The day everything was finally put together back in December was the first day of final exams. And one of our board members came up the stairs and just kind of lost. He goes, oh my gosh, look at what you've done. Isn't this amazing? And a student came up and said, sir, it's finals week. We'd like you to be quiet. Um, <laughs> he appreciated that as a, as a former student himself. But what was truly amazing is that people just literally stop when they walk in. It's the same old building, but a totally different perspective. We've made the window 
the focus rather than the enemy. And what did it cost? Well, the time of the maintenance and IT people, which was carefully budgeted. This was one of those projects that if you had not had a master calendar and been working forward, working towards getting it all done, it couldn't have happened. We were delayed once. Other things intervened and moved us back down the, the, the list. But when it happened, it happened quickly. It was done in about four days. And that was from beginning to end. We were truly amazed. The library staff loves graph paper. And they take a lot of measurements. We discovered that we really appreciated the 35-foot tape measure. And everybody had ideas about where things would go, whose desk was going to be where, what would be on that desk, how it would be accessible to others. Custodial support was really important because as we began to pick up the pieces of the furniture and the cubicles and everything else, wow, there was, I mean, we'd only been in this location for about eight years, but there was eight years of really scary dust. So what did we have to pay out of pocket? This is the page I'm really excited about. We have a window that looks down on the advising center. And if you look up, it was a little intimidating. Not that too many women on my staff anymore wear skirts. But we just thought we wanted a little bit of privacy. We wanted to be maybe behind a shear. Well, I have two staff that are really, really dedicated to tracking down sales, and they found five semi-matching sheer panels at JCPenney's for $6 each. And then we splurged. We took our uh, purchasing card and went to Office Max, and we spent $150 on matching desk accessories. So everybody's pen cup is the same. Everybody's this is the same. We even bought a few extra for the reference desk. And it was truly amazing. You give somebody a new box to put their paper clips in, they feel pretty honored. And I, I don't mean that at all in a negative way, but all of a sudden, I've noticed that desks are cleaner. When people, leave, I sometimes worry that, well, they're leaving. You know, they're going to come in and tell me I've gotten another job tomorrow. But no, they're keeping their desktops cleaner, neater, better looking. It's just amazing. We always have nice, sharp pencils for people. I mean, they have pride in their work area because their area, work, their area looks professional. And we did it for $180 plus 10 kind of messed up looking Ottomans. And, and literally, on a dime. But I think the thing that has truly been amazing is that there hasn't been a single person who's come in and said, what the heck did you do that for? It's, wow, this is amazing. Why did you wait so long? Two other design opportunities that we took advantage of that weren't necessarily quite so inexpensive. We love to travel. The first thing I noticed when I walked in here was the red wall. You may have noticed in the shot with the catalog and the, or the circ desk and the stacks of books that we have color on our wall. We were like San Diego. Yes, everything was white, only we had Blackhawk white, a special blend of paint. And the walls were white. <laughs> Trees that had been planted across the street in the parking lot were taken down several years ago. And in the summer, even though that wall faced north, there was a tremendous amount of blight, a brightness coming in those windows. And it didn't matter how you sat at the tables, which were still perpendicularly lined up against the table. If you sat this way, the sun came in and blanked out your computer screen. And if you sat this way, your eyeballs got blinded. We talked to somebody who suggested the best thing you could do is to kill the brightness with paint. So we proposed painting our large east-west walls bold, bold colors. And I'll tell you, the first time I saw the swipe of red paint go up on the wall, I'm like, oh, what have I done? But by the time he was done, we wondered again, why did we wait so long? And people came in and said, what'd you do to make the library seem so warm and cozy? We put some red, some blue, and some green paint on the wall. The other thing that happened several years ago under a previous president was a capital campaign to raise money for improvements at, at the college. And one of the seven featured projects was maintaining or supporting technology for the library. Now, this was back in 1998, which was or maybe 1995, 96. But that was a pretty novel idea at the community college. And as a result of that, a donor decided that she was going to significantly support that effort um, with a very generous bequest that we get to spend before she's dead. So we have an electronic classroom. And the really powerful thing about that electronic classroom 
is that it's not just used by the library. Other, other faculty can come and use it, but it has really become a center for research. We all have experienced the 50-minute dreaded library orientation where you have to tell them everything they'll ever need to know about doing research, blah, 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 blah. This room is so awesome that the faculty want to come back a second or a third time. They might want expanded presentations. That room has drawn faculty in. Now we have a library lounge area that welcomes students in. We're still not very busy in the afternoons, but that's a propensity that community colleges experience. But it's a much more lively, thriving place. And most of it we did for very much less than a dime. So I'd be happy to take any questions. <laughs>